Welcome everyone. My name is Hakan Adere. Today we will talk about the environment management through Cloud Portal. So let's say that um, you have your own custom URL, right? Instead of using the default ones, you decided to use, um, you decided to create, um, let, let's go here. And let's say that you want to create your own uh, domain for that, right? Apparel, apparel.mycompany.com, right? As you can see, this SSS certificate is valid for only these domains, right? I cannot use, even if I define it, right, like this, I can do that, obviously. But what happens is if I try to access this URL, then even if that URL redirected to the CCV2 IP address, right, um, the CCV2 cannot provide the right SSS certificate. And then what you will see in your browser is, okay, uh, there is some kind of, it is not secure to move to visit this site because this site doesn't really provide the right SSS certificate. Right. So what you need to do, if you change this one, right, this domain address, you need to associate the right SSS certificate with it. So how do you install SSS certificates? Again, you don't need to open any tickets for that. What you need to do is go to the security section, right? And here you need to go to the SSS certificates tab, like here, right? And you cannot delete the default SSS certificates that are generated by the system, right? But you can delete your own SSS certificates if you upload without any issue. So what you need to do, you need to click create, and then here you specify your custom SSS certificate. My custom um, storefront SSR certificate, right? So here you don't upload the SSR certificate, file, but you need to provide it, copy the content and paste it here. So let me show you one SSS certificate example that I have. So here I have the SSS certificate and I have the private key. So these are just self-signed SSS certificates, uh, but your valid one should be exactly the same, right? So you need to copy the content of your SSS certificate, right? Let's go back to the cloud portal. And you need to copy the body of the SSS certificate. And then you need to do the same thing for the key. Again, just copy the content of the key and paste it here. Like it should begin as begin and end, right? And again, here what you see is the, sometimes I see that the RSA key is provided encrypted, right? It shouldn't be encrypted. We cannot use like uh, any PFX keys here, right? Uh, so your private keys or your certificates, uh, they need to be in, uh, in, in plain format without encrypted, right? So you need to put them as it is, uh, right? And then you provide the, the body of the certificate, you provide the key of the certificate, and optionally you can provide the the certificate authority file, right? So the, the, the authority, authority of which which issued this certificate, right? It is not required, but highly suggested at least to be used in production environments, right? Um, to provide the CA file. And then all you need to do is click save, right? Again, once you save it, you cannot change it uh, or you cannot download it. Uh, what you can do, you can just if you want to change, you can delete it and you upload another one. Or you can just keep it and create another one with a different name, right? And once you create your SSL certificate, you need to go back to your environment. You need to go to that domain, that, that endpoint, right? And you need to select your uh, custom SSL certificate. Again, right? And save it. So this is how it works. And, and this is how you upload an SSS certificate, and this is how you associate that certificate with an endpoint. Again, if you have multiple endpoints, you need to do the same operation again and again for each endpoint. Uploading the SSS cert certificate is is okay, but you need to do uh, you need to do that association again and again uh, for for each of your endpoint. Okay, so. With that, I think we can go through the trusted SSS certificates. Um, so let's say that um, 
you need you are you are um, you are calling some kind of an external web service, right? And that service um, is using a self-signed SSL certificate, right? And then you need to use that. You need to uh, you need to trust that SSL certificate, right? How do you do that? Again, what you can do you you can go to security, right? And here there is a tab called trusted certificates. Again, um, for trusted certificates, you can delete any trusted certificates here, right? Because there are no default trusted certificates that comes with the uh, with, with your environment, right? Um, trusted certificates, you can you can define whatever you want. So let me, um, uh, yeah. As you can see, I couldn't delete this one because it is used by some domains. So. Let me create a trusted cert certificate. Again, uh, let me quickly show you a trusted certificate. So here I have a trusted certificate that I created. Um, again, this is just the body of the certificate, nothing more. Uh, for trusted certificates, you don't need to provide the key. Uh, the body is just enough, right? So you just say, my trusted certificate 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 and then you need to provide the body of the certificate and then you need to provide an alias so this alias is the same alias that is passed to the JVM right so whatever you put here uh, that that alias is passed to JVM when the servers are started right so uh, uh, my Again, I can put it here as JVM, right? So this is the uh, this is the alias that is passed to JVM. So you save it, and then you have to go back to your environment. Okay, perfect. You have to go back to your environment, and you need to associate that trusted certificate with your environment. For that, you have to go to the deployment configuration. So this part and click edit, right? And here you need to add that trusted certificate. So I will add my trusted certificate JVM and save it. So this means that with the next deployment, right? That certificate will be uh, uh, put into the servers and then will be available in the JVM, right? You can refer to that a certificate uh, using that alias in in your code, right? Uh, so you can you can do that web service call as well without any issue. Uh, but just adding it as as a certificate here is is not enough. As you can see in the guide, after you add that you do this change, the deployment configuration change. Either it's a trusted certificate host alias or security files, you need to do a deployment, right? So whatever you change in the deployment configuration section, it requires another deployment to take the effect, right? Uh, so what you can do, you, you can basically, uh, you can basically deploy your last uh, build again, again into the same environment. So I, let's go to the history. Okay, so this one is deployed, right? So I can click here and all I need to say is, uh, I want to deploy this build that I have again on the same environment, uh, the training environment, without any ant system update, um, and either with rolling update or recreate, doesn't matter really. Uh, and then you click deploy, and with, with your next deployment, um, that uh, that trusted certificate will be available, right? Okay, so this is how you install trusted certificates. So let's say that you want to use some host alias, right? Instead of using IP addresses in your code, right? Uh, maybe you want to use aliases, right? And then you want to change these aliases on runtime, right? Uh, so how do you do that? So what you can do, yeah. So what you can do, uh, you can go to the security again. And here you have the host alias sets tab. Again, here you will see some host aliases. You can delete them uh, or create a new one. 
defining an host alias is again very simple. Let me quickly show it to you. So all you need to do is just put that IP address and one space between the IP address and the host alias, right? And then put it into a text file. Again, you need to put one host alias per line, right? And then once you define this file, you need to go back to the cloud portal, right? Let's go back to the cloud portal. And then you need to click create my host uh, alias. And then you need to upload that host alias and create it. Okay. And once you create your host alias, again, you need to go to your environment and you need to go to the deployment configuration and select one host alias, right? So you can define multiple certificates in, an, in, in, in your deployment configuration, but you can only select one host alias. So if you need to add additional aliases, you need to delete your current file and upload a new file with the updated, uh, with the added alias, right? So you select your host alias, you save it, and once you update host alias, again, same as trusted certificate, certificates, you need to do another deployment. So this is how it works.